بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه وعلى ما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم كل نفس زائقة الموت رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي واجعل لي وزيرا من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين So we have a janazah today of Ustad Khalifa He just passed away yesterday and it's really hard to talk about something else. I met him this Tuesday, and then again I met him this Wednesday. And Thursday morning we get the news that he passed away, rahimahullah. Usually he's the first one, for those of you who know him, those of you who don't know, he's the first one in Jum'ah to come in the masjid with his calligraphy book and writing pen and he will write things, write du'as, write ayat of the Qur'an. And even today, subhanAllah, he was, even today he was the first one here. But his beautiful soul was taken away. It's a reminder for all of us, if you don't come to Masjid, you will be brought to Masjid eventually. And subhanAllah, he was even enrolled from hospital last week in our Tazkiyah classes. And we had no idea that it will happen so quickly, subhanAllah, but that is reality of life. I visited him last Tuesday. I visited him last Wednesday. Things I noticed, subhanAllah, the peace, the tranquility, even the doctor told him that you have a few moments left in your life. His son told me that whenever he'll become conscious, a day before he passed away. Whenever he will become conscious, the first thing he will do, he will look at the clock and he will say, let me make, let me do tayammum, let me make salah. Whenever he will become conscious, subhanAllah. He would keep that stone with him on top of his bed to make tayammum. In the last two meetings I had with him, the only thing which I heard repeatedly, la ilaha illallah, la ilaha illallah, alhamdulillah ala kulli hal, alhamdulillah ala kulli hal. Allah, you are great. You have given me everything. And he told me that, Sheikh Asif, I'm only afraid. If Allah, if Allah won't forgive my shortcomings. And I told him this is good feeling to have at this time, balance it out with hope. This hope and fear both need to be there. Those of you who don't know, he was visiting Imam in Khatib across the US. In Michigan, he led Tarawi. He spent some time in Saudi, in India, in Tanzania. For the last 50 years, he spent time in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was 70 years old. When I was helping him in his inheritance, day before he passed away. So I told him, tell me what you have and how you want it to be distributed. Do you want to bequest anything? He told me, Sheikh Asif, I don't have any money. I told him, Sheikh Khalifa, I told him that what you have is way better than the money people leave. You are very fortunate that you are going in this way, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We don't know about ourselves how we will die. And how you end your life have a huge impact on your akhirah. And that is why Rasulullah says, Man ahabba dunya adarra bi akhirah. 
whoever loves this worldly life will suffer in akhirah وَمَنْ أَحَبَّ آخَرَةُ أَضَرَّ بِدُنْيَا And whoever loves his hereafter will suffer in this dunya. فَآثِرُ مَا يَبْقَى عَلَى مَا يَفْنَى Then give priority what is everlasting than what is not everlasting. I just want to take this opportunity to tell you one hadith of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم of what will going to happen when we will, all will die. We all have to have this journey. Death is inevitable. Mouth is inevitable. It's an undeniable fact. No matter how rich, how wealthy you are, your wealth won't stop you to die, from dying. If that was the case, then Karun and Firon won't die. No matter how righteous, how pious, how practicing Muslim you are, that will still come to you. If that was the case, then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam won't die. لو أن الدنيا تدوم لأهلها لكان رسول الله حي وباقيا. So that will come. Muslim, non-Muslim, practicing Muslim, not practicing Muslim. So we all have to have this journey. So just I want to share one hadith with you. This is mentioned in Abu Dawud and Muslim Ahmad Sahih hadith that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Bara bin al Azib, he narrates that we are going to the graveyard cemetery to bury our brother, our companion. And when we placed him in the grave, Fajalasa Rasulullah Jalasna alayhi wa jalasna hawlahu. Then Rasulullah sat and we all sat around him in the cemetery. And there was such a pin drop silence. We are giving undivided attention to Rasulullah Sallallahu that we could hear birds are flying on our head. Then Rasulullah Sallallahu after a short break, he says, "Istaizu billahi min al qabr." marrat. He said three times, seek protection from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala from the punishment of the grave. And then he says this. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all to be included in this category. Say Ameen. He says, Inna al Abdala Mu'mina is a kanafi in Qita min al Dunya by Iqbala min al Akhara, Nazal Ayrehil Malaika min al Samai by the Wuju, Kana Wuju, who shams Marham Kafnu min Akfan al Jannah. He says, Verily, the believing servant, believing men, believing women, when his time, when her time of death comes, when leaving this life, journeying journeying to the next life then the angels will descend upon him the angel of death their faces will be so beautiful that they will be shining like sun and they will going to bring a shroud for the soul we have a shroud for the body the angels will bring the shroud for the soul and grows in the perfumes of the jannah then the angel of death will come and sit on his head while taking the soul. And they will say, Ayyatuhan nafsu tayyiba ukhruji ukhruji ila maghfiratim min Allahi wa ridwan. Oh, you virtuous soul, come out to forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fatakhruj tasilu kama tasilu al qatra from my minfis siqa. So the soul will come out so easily, so politely, without any pain, just like a drop of water comes out of bottle. Then the angels will take the soul. They will going to ascend with the soul. And the moment they are taking the soul up, the entire environment will going to feel the fragrance and a good smell coming from that soul. And a group of angels will pass by when this group of angels, when this angel of death is taking the soul. And the group of angels will feel the good smell. And they will going to say, Ma has a ruh What is this good, sweet smelling soul? Who is that person? Then angel of death will say, This is such and such person, son of such and such person. And they will take all the good names, what he was called or she was called in dunya. This is Ustad Khalifa. This is Sheikh Khalifa. This is so on. This is so forth. 
all the good names. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the one in this category. Ameen, Ya Rab. Until they will reach to the lowest sky. Then they, they will ask for the permission to enter. And they will be granted entry. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Uktubi kitaba indi fi illiyin. That registered this soul in illiyin. There are two places where the soul of good people and soul of bad people will be registered. Soul of good people will be registered in Aldiyin. Aldiyin comes from Ala, high ranks. Sijin comes from the Sijin, prison, tight. The soul of a righteous person will be registered in Aldiyin. And then Allah says, take back this soul. The questioning will about to start. So his soul will be returned. How this will happen, we don't know because this is metaphysics. But the soul will be returned. And now the questions will start. Two angels will going to come. And two angels will going to ask him. Who was your Lord? This is a very first question which all of us will be asked after our death. Very first question. Who is your master? And he will reply because he's a good believing soul. Rabbi Allah, my Lord is Allah. Then they both will say, what was the religion? What was the system of life you spent your life with? What was the halal and haram you followed? They will say, my religion, my halal and haram was Islam. Who is this person who was sent to you as a prophet? Who was the prophet? Who, whom did you follow as a role model? And the, he will say, Who are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa My prophet was Allah's messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Three question. Lord, who is your Lord? What is your religion? Who is your prophet? And this was a believing soul. He will going to answer. She will going to answer all these three things. And remember these three things will not be answered from intellect or from the mind. These three things will be answered from the spiritual heart. وَمَنْ أَتَ اللَّهَ بِي قَلْبٍ سَلِيمٍ اللهم جعلنا منهم And then he will be asked what you have done in terms of the amal, in terms of the actions. He will reply, I read the book, then I believed in it and I accept it. I did my level best. For Yunadi Munadin Fisama, then the caller will call from the sky, An Sadaqa Abdi. My servant has spoken the truth. For Afrishuhu Minal Jannah, wa Albisuhu Minal Jannah, of the Hula Hubab and Ilal Jannah. Then let him feel Jannah, open the doors for Jannah, clothe him, give him garments of the Jannah, give him good news. And while he will be getting this, he will see. That another stranger man in a beautiful face with a beautiful smell in a beautiful garment will come to him and he will ask him, Man anta, who are you? That indeed your face is someone which gives good news. Tell me any good news. And he will say, that I am your good deeds. The deeds you used to do in dunya, you will get there in the grave. Nothing else. The moment he will see his destination, the moment he will feel Jannah, he will going to say, Rabbi Aqi Misara, Allah established your judgment right now. I don't want break. Allah wa jalla minhu. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive our brother, Ustad Khalifa. To give Shifa Kamila and Ajala to all those brothers and sisters who are struggling with any physical or spiritual disease. Amin ya Rabbal Allah.